For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled Revolutionary or Emancipatory Consciousness and Action Before and After 1990 and 1994, Part 1. Why is it so important for you to reclaim the words revolutionary and freedom fighter? Is it not just romanticism or nostalgia? Well, I think it's precision with language. That's not my main concern. My, I have got a personal concern because I do come from the struggle, but I also feel when people uh, just damn those words, treat them as rubbish, as fake, they are spitting on Albert Lutuli, uh, Chris Harney, Moses Kotani, a whole lot of Bram Fisher, a whole lot of uh, people who are famous in the struggle. And I think it's very important to understand that the word freedom fighter means someone fighting for freedom. And the word revolutionary, uh, in dictionaries, they tend to associate with violence, instability, chaos, but it has a number of different meanings. It's got a long history relating originally to revolving, but it's from about the 18th century onwards, started to uh, mean turning things upside down, which in the sense of our history meant that the people who had been oppressed ought to have become free through this revolution. It's important that we understand that there's not one meaning to the word, and you don't have to use the word revolutionary. As I said in the article, you can talk about an emancipatory project, you can talk about a liberation project, a freedom project, anything that l relates to progress by my definition and by the definition of uh, Raymond Williams, whose book keywords I refer to. So is it not stretching things a bit to describe the 1994 elections as revolutionary? Well, you know, people find it strange because they have in their mind that you must overthrow the state and that there must be violence uh, in that process. And instead, we had a process of a negotiated settlement. Now, why I see it as revolutionary is that until 1994, the majority of the people of South Africa are uh, had no right of access to a whole lot of things in the country, a whole lot of things that white people could take for granted. So that in the sense that that was turned uh, completely upside down in that instead of whites only getting certain things, everyone has a right to health care, to uh, use of their language, to education, to adequate transport and a whole lot of other things. I can't remember all the things in the Bill of Rights offhand, but those things were not there before. And it was not finalized in 1994. When I speak of it as being a revolution, I don't mean that everything was over in 1994. Revolution, by my understanding, is not a single act by the, where the state is seized. It's a process of constantly developing things. In history, a whole lot of things uh, were not possible to secure. For example, people did not know how to manage certain things like earthquakes, and their effects would be to wipe out millions of people. Now, in the present day, we have the capacity to deal with storms. We're right now dealing with a whole lot of illnesses and all of that. If the willpower is there and people are acting in good faith, it is possible to secure these things. And in so doing, uh, in providing more of the goods, the good things of life that people need for their well-being, we are enhancing this revolution or this democratic or emancipatory process. And lastly, Raymond, why do you say that the content of freedom is never finalized? While we have a constitution and the rule of law, and there is also freedom. But politicians and others are stealing, but that does not mean we have not completed our journey to freedom. 
I did answer this partly with the last question in, in the sense that um, the notion of, of freedom that we had in the 1980s, for example, was not just the vote. We were thinking of people having much greater participation in democratic life, that they would not see politics simply as voting every five years. And even that we now see is being debased by buying of votes, people having to take a photograph of their votes and then get paid for it outside. Now, obviously, those are abuses of what we have got. But what I would like to see is uh, much more participation of the people between in the five years between elections. But it doesn't. Ha we can't necessarily have exactly what you had in the 1980s. What I think is necessary now in the crisis that we have, but it is also a contribution to the revolution and to freedom, is um, a situation where a range of groups, including professionals, business, uh, people who care, do good is like gift of the givers is the biggest, but there are lots of these types of people. Social movements like Abakhale, Basim Chontolo, Amadiba, Crisis Committee, all of these are involved together in reclaiming our freedom and also insisting that their part in it must be a permanent feature of democracy. And in that way, the revolution continues or the freedom continues. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's polity about revolutionary or emancipatory consciousness and action before and after 1990-1994, part one.